So what happened there then? Where? Were it a punishment beating? <laughs> I nicked that off dinner, ladies, do you remember? <laughs> when Petula says that. I've stood here, I'm in agony, you don't care. I don't, I'm holding him up. Does that help? No. What about if I do that? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Uh, sorry we weren't here last week. No, we got rained off and blown off. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of us did. Uh, I tell you what, you can never have enough wood. And we've got enough wood, but we didn't have time to build an ark to film a vlog on last week. I tell you, so much rain. We had six inches of rain in the whole of October here. Wow. Three feet of it last weekend. <laughs> Thank you, that, well, those that asked if we were okay, because yes. there was a lot on the news, weren't there? There was. There was a lot of bad flooding. We weren't everywhere. on the news. Uh, but a lot of you were asking if we were okay, and yes, we, we're all right. A couple of the neighbours got flooded. Yeah. Uh, but the bees, they were fine. They all stayed in the hives. They were watching Netflix all weekend, weren't they? Fifty Shades of Bee. Fifty Shades of Bee? Yeah. Uh, the chickens were all right. In fact, the chickens got <laughs> the a bit... The chickens are not normal. No, they were kind of trudging, stamping around in the mud, and then coming up to the gate where they can see us in the kitchen and looking as if to say, I'm going to sh on your eggs for this, <laughs> weren't they? They, just, they were just studying it. <laughs> but they're Beat all it down with rain. They're all fine. We kept changing the bedding so they got nice clean straw, and eventually they learned and they kept out of the rain. But they're okay. Everything's good now, and the dogs were fine as well. Yeah. And of course Sherlock, but we'll come to Sherlock in a little while. Yes. But yeah, there was a lot of water. The lock went up by about five or six feet, didn't about it? About six foot, yes. You remember my favourite place, don't you? From the summer when I was playing on the swing and skinny dipping in the lock. Yeah. Well, I went back down there yesterday uh, to have a look to see if everything was all right. And the beach is not there because the water's like yay feet high. Yay feet. Yeah, but my favourite, not just mine, a lot of people's favourite tree with the swing on it. Yeah. The gales have blown it down and it's now submerged under a few feet of flood water in the loch, so a bit sad that. Anyway, the important thing is that we're all all right. We're all good. And the flood waters are starting to recede, a bit like Sean's hairline. That's been receding since I was 30. When you're washing your face, how do you know how far up to go? <laughs> is that like a point? <laughs> I shouldn't be making you laugh because you're disabled, aren't you? You're on, you're on crutches at the moment. So in today's vlog, we are going to catch up and tell you what we were meant to be telling you last time, which is all about Sherlock. So we're going to show you how good Sean is with his wood. We're going to show you the build process from start to finish in a time lapse. We're going to show you the day that we introduced Sherlock to his new home. Yes. And how he's settling in. So what do they say on that record? Can you remember? Uh, so, so, Relax, we, don't do it. What we're gonna do? No, I like to suck it. What we're gonna? <laughs> what we're gonna do now is go back, way back. Oh yes, back into time. <laughs> It all started back in February this year when I fell in love with Sherlock. He's a five-year-old Eurasian eagle owl, also known as a European eagle owl. He was being cared for by Blue Highland Bird Rescue in Sutherland up in the far north of Scotland. We bonded straight away and because the rescue centre was struggling to find space to care for other rescued and injured birds, we offered to build Sherlock a new home on our croft and that would free up space at the centre so they could care for other birds but it would also give Sherlock the best quality of life possible for the remainder of his captive years. We had a piece of land on the croft that would be perfect to put Sherlock's new home. But after getting some quotes from local builders, we soon worked out that we could build it at about a third of the cost ourselves. Once we were both confident we had everything in place, Sean couldn't wait to get his hands on his wood. I remember how knackered you were digging <laughs> these 13 holes. What are the 13 holes for? They're just the 13 plinths are about 18 inch, 12 to 18 inch deep, and they're just to support the structure. You kind of put boxes around them. Yes. And then took the boxes off once the concrete had set. Yes. And then you put these steel brackets on. Yeah, these steel brackets, they're held in by four bolts. And so the posts started going up four inches by four inches. Yep, that's right. And then what were the joists? The joists are six by two. And I remember loads and loads of these steel metal brackets arriving. Yeah, they're just to support those joists, to save me screwing the joists and the posts together. Yeah. 
this was like one of the best moments when that first part of the structure was done. But then I remember you kind of got that mesh on the top, which is two inch steel mesh. That's right, yes. But then you started focusing on the, the shed bit, didn't you? Uh, yeah, the I shed did, in yes. his indoor area. You got the joists going in on the floor there, haven't you? Yes. What are they, six by two inch joists? Yeah, they're the same, six by two. And then you put things to support them at each side as well, didn't you, to stop them moving about? Yeah, little pieces of six by two just to brace them. And then the inside started taking shape, so you can see kind of the separation between Sherlock's indoor area and the shed. So once you got all the joists down, uh, you put the board in. That's not six by two, is it? That's six no. by one. Yeah, that's right. That's six by one. And that just went all the way through in, from our shed bit and into Sherlock's bit, didn't it? It did, yes. All screwed in, nice yep. and tight. This was my favourite bit, the outside panelling. Because it really started to take shape at this point. I remember you just focusing on that indoor area because then you started putting the roof on to kind of get that bit weatherproof, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. I just wanted to keep the rain out of it. And what were the boards? They're just OSB board. And how thick are they? Uh, I think they're about 12 mil thick. So we weren't just putting boards on like the shed and the indoor area, we also had like a sheltered area outside, which we were roofing as well, weren't we? Yeah, we were, to give him some outside shelter. So this is the outside bit, so it's still gonna be open on two sides, but I think the back and the roof were solid, weren't they? Yeah, they were. I know you decided to put some extra strength with these four by two pieces of wood. Yeah, I put those in where the OSB board sort of joins. Uh, we chose a really strong, extra strong roof felt uh, because it is under the trees and because of the conditions we get. And that's held in with about 10 million clout nails and two big, two liters, no, two great big tins of bitumen. The other thing that we had to consider was the damp, wasn't it? And that's why you created yes. these kind of channel gutters which were filled with stones, so it's not sat in water all the That's time. That's correct, yes. That's quite an ingenious idea. Was that yours or did you nick it from somebody? No, I nicked that from somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and then the same on the back as well. There's a bit of an angle on that left-hand side, wasn't there? Yeah, it's just uneven ground. So what's, what panels are you using for the, this bit? It, it's the same as the floorboard in, it's just six by one paneling. And then we are gonna batten these out later, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Here I am sectioning off his indoor space to our storage and his outdoor space. So if I remember rightly, you put the wood up and then you actually cut the shape of the door and the hatch out, didn't you? Yes, so that it matched up. Uh, you can see the door on the right and then on the left hand side is his hatch, which we can open and close if we need to keep him in. And then it was just tidying up, wasn't it? You were putting yeah. uh, battens all around the outside, making it nice and tidy. Here we go with all the battening and that just seals those gaps, it makes it look nice. Job done. And here it is, completo, finito. It's finished, and there is an owl in there somewhere, you might be able to see him. Yeah, he's there. You? He is in shot, but I don't know, because the sun's at a very funny angle lately. That's why we look kind of nuclear blast on the left-hand side of us. He's leaning on a post falling asleep. So we've got a nice solid muse for Sherlock, but unfortunately the Lord giveth, i.e. the muse, and the Lord taketh away Sean's knees. My knees. Which are now literally fag ash. <laughs> well he's the fag <laughs> and, and your knees are the ash. It was that bad. You can see he's actually on crutches. This is not a prop people. No he's not. He's actually, this is no joke, he's going to the hospital after we've finished filming this. That's how bad they are. He did go to the doctors the other night because you couldn't walk, couldn't I you? I couldn't walk at all. And she asked him to get off the bed and he farted in her face. <laughs> True story, <laughs> hand on heart, he farted well, in her face. Well, I, I stepped off the bed and the pain was so excruciating, every muscle tensed up me on... <laughs> did it? Uh, right, so we had the muse, <laughs> so then it was time to welcome Sherlock. Luckily, it's only a five minute journey from the rescue centre to his new home. So he was only in the raptor box for about 10 minutes. When he arrived, we took him straight into his quiet indoor space, set him on the soft wood shavings and opened his door, and then left him to find his own way out and get acquainted with his new surroundings. It didn't take him long. It was only a few minutes after opening his door that he came out, flew up onto one of his perches, and it wasn't long after that that he was exploring the outside area of his new home. And he's all settled in now. He's been here just over three weeks. 
You can probably see him. He's fallen asleep on one of his perches. When we told you that he'd arrived, I asked if you had any questions because we were getting so many questions and I thought if everybody puts them in one place, I can get a coffee, grab me hobnobs and have a read through them. And then delete them. And then delete all, well, 90% <laughs> nine, nine, of them are a bit crap to be honest. But, <laughs> so I picked out a few of the most common questions and I thought we'd answer them today. Question number one, I thought I'd get this one out of the way because when I read it, it upset me a little bit. Really? Well, I thought they think I'm being cruel and I'm not being cruel. Oh, we're never cruel. So I thought I'd get it out of the way. So question number one is, why have you got him in a cage? Isn't that cruel? Well, they just don't know. That's all. That's all it is. I don't think, I don't think they're deliberately yeah. being thick. Yeah. Uh, so the thing is... Eurasian eagle owls are not native to the UK. They've not really got any predators, so they'd cause havoc yeah. with all the other birds and wildlife, and it would disrupt that balance it out would. in the wild. So that's why we can't release him. But a very similar law says that we can't kill him either. That's not that right. you'd want to, but because he's captive, born and bred, we, we, the other option would be to euthanise him, and we don't want to kill him, but we can't set him free. So what choice have we got? Well, he was at a bird rescue centre just down the road, and he was very happy and healthy, but his accommodation, because they're trying to help so many birds, the accommodation was quite small for him. So we've built this purpose-built muse, which is huge. It's about 10 metres long, about 4 metres wide, and it increases the amount of space he's got by about four times, I think, yes, isn't it? Yes, yes, he only had a quarter of this. And he's not sharing this, he was sharing the last one with another uh, eagle owl called Marlo. Now, he's literally got, well, not quite 360 because of his inside area, but the both sides and above him and at the side of him, he can see out. He can see back into the forest. He can see up into the treetops. He can see everything that's going on around him. From behind me, he can see from miles ahead of us. Yes. Out into the mountains across the highlands. So what we're trying to do is give him the best life and the best surroundings and the best house. That's possible. That we can. <laughs> Next question. Oh, question two is, won't he be lonely? Are you going to get him a mate? Well, think about this one. He was captive, born and bred. So his parents were at the rescue center when uh, mummy laid the egg that is now Sherlock. But he had to be kept captive because he's not native. So if we get Sherlock a mate and she has an egg. Then we've got to keep it captive. And it's not fair to bring another eagle owl into the world that we're going to have to keep captive for the whole of his life which could be anything from 40 50 even 60 years that's not fair so no we're not going to get him a mate and we can't put another male in there really although he did live with marlo at the rescue center yeah but we want him to have the space to enjoy his life and if we put another male eagle owl in there it could cause him stress and the other owl that we put in there they're and a again, solitary bird anyway, aren't they? They are very solitary, and they're solitary out in the wild. They don't gang up, not like crows and ravens and, That's right. that, and starlings and that you see out kind of in big groups. These are always lonely, solitary birds that stay on their own, except when they're mating. A bit like me and you, really, isn't it? Go! <laughs> we always get asked this question when we get any new animal, and it always makes me chuckle because of the amount of thought that's gone into the question. <laughs> What do Ollie and Otis think of Sherlock? Well, we asked him and we actually had a really good conversation with Ollie about it, didn't we? His vocabulary is getting really good. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Obviously, they're kept very well apart. Sherlock, if he wanted to, could basically rip Otis and Ollie apart. Yes. <laughs> His talons as powerful as a wolf's jaw. They could really sink into your arm or your head. Yeah. It's not a pet, it's not to be cuddled, nope. it's not gonna be tamed, and they're kept very well apart. So you can see the enclosure is about 1.2 meters high. Yes. Which stops Otis and Ollie jumping up. If they jump up, they still don't get to this level. That's right. So that's not gonna stress Sherlock, but it also means that they don't see Sherlock either because he's always very still anyway. It doesn't move much. It doesn't move much. 
So they're kept very well apart and there's no way that they will get together. Same question about when people were saying, oh, you've got to watch your chickens. Well, he's not going to get out of this. <laughs> got to watch your chickens. To be honest. And if he did get out of this, then the first place I would go for a meal would be the chickens, to yes. be honest. Yeah. So it would be our fault. It wouldn't be his fault or the chickens' fault. Next question is, will Sherlock be warm enough in your cold Highland winters? He's a wild animal. He is a wild animal, and they're native across Eastern Europe and Scandinavia where it gets very cold. Now, you know when you get your winter duvet out from under the bed, or in your wardrobe, or wherever you keep it, I don't know. What has it got in it? Duck feathers. Yeah, down. You've heard of that, haven't you? Yes. Down. And that's what eagle owls have. They have an outer layer of feathers all over the body and the wings, but they're under there, they've got this very soft, downy feathers. They have. And what happens is the heat comes off their body and it gets trapped in this downy feathers. Like a duvet. Feels quite nice, actually. <laughs> and then the heat gets trapped between those feathers and his outer feathers. So it basically gives him a layer of warm insulation around his body. Like a thermos flask. That's exactly it. So he can withstand really low temperatures below freezing. So he's going to be absolutely fine. But if it does get too cold, he'll just go indoors anyway, because he's got his own indoor space where it's always going to be above freezing. So he's going to be fine. Next question is, are you going to be able to handle him and fly him? Well, we'll be able to handle him, or you will. When I read that question, will you be able to fly him? I, th I imagined that scene from Never Ending Story where he's like flying the dragon. <laughs> Come on, Sherlock, <laughs> take me to Golsby. <laughs> Uh, so, no, we won't be able to fly him, not off his leash anyway, uh, but I'll be able to walk around the croft with him on my arm. Yeah, so show get, him around. He'll get to see, he'll get out of his enclosure every now and then. Uh, but we can't fly him because, again, not native, we can't risk him flying away, and he would. Well, you would, wouldn't you? He would. A really popular question is, is there going to be a Sherlock live cam? <sighs> if we, we could. We'd love to be able to do that. Yes. But we can't for a couple of reasons. One is that his muse is right on the edge of the croft next to the forest. We wanted it to be as natural environment for him as possible. So as he looks out, he's got the forest in the background and above him. But that means that we've got no electricity up here. And we're out the way of Wi-Fi. We can't get Wi-Fi. We've got very basic 4G data, but we use that for the security cameras uh, so that obviously we can keep everything secure. We have got some lights in here, they're solar powered, as is the security cameras. So unfortunately, we haven't got the facilities to have a live cam, otherwise we would. Yes, we would. Thank you for all your questions. Yes. I think it's brilliant mm -hmm. that people are interested. Yes, yeah, so do I. Uh, so carry on asking, we might do another Q&A vlog and actually get in there with him yes. in a few weeks when he's a little bit more settled with us. At the moment when we go in, he's, a, he's still a little bit nervous, but he's all right with us, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, he's still a bit hissy. <laughs> do you know what I could do with right now? What? A month in bed. <sighs> Couldn't yeah. you? Oh, definitely. A little holiday. What about a narrowboat holiday? No. Shall we go on a narrowboat? No. <laughs> <For a week>? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, things are quietening down around the croft. And I'm actually glad because I think this year's caught up with us, hasn't it? It has. We've done a lot. We have done a hell of a lot. I mean, Sherlock's muse has really taken it out on Sean and his poor knees. And you've still, you still got another fence to build yet. <laughs> the bees have really taken it out of me. Uh, and I'm glad they're all quietening down and going. To, they've been out today because it's been nice, but yes. they're really starting to settle for the winter. And I don't need to go and inspect every hive every single week now for the winter. I'll just go and basically check that everything's as it should be. Yeah. Uh, the chickens are doing what the chickens do. They quieten Standing in down. the rain. Yeah. <laughs> they quieten down their laying a little bit. Uh, but it's going to give us a chance to, I think, upgrade the enclosure over the winter and just... Yeah, just do a bit of maintenance on it. Yeah, just keep it nice and tidy. So we need another project for the winter, don't we? Once your knees are better. That'll be about four years' time. What do you think we should do? The next project? I've got, I've got a dread. couple of ideas. I dread to think. I've got a couple of... One of them involves the forest. Does it? And what's beyond the forest. Okay. This is news to me. We'll have to have a chat later when you've got your pot on. 
he really is going to the hospital after you've filmed this. So you'll probably see in next. Hopefully you won't have a pot on because I don't fancy taking the dogs out for a walk twice a day for the next if it's six like, weeks. If it's like this and I haven't got a pot on you doing it. Oh. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this vlog. Sorry we didn't miss last week's, uh, but uh, we hope you enjoyed this one. If you are not already, please subscribe to the channel. Yes. Give the video a like and hit the... <laughs> You're all right with that. <laughs> <laughs> hit the wibbly wobbly bell and YouTube will notify you when we release a new video, which is usually every week. Yeah? Friday, you 4 o'clock. Are you all right getting to hospital? Do you want me to call a Nino? A Nino, Nino, Nino. He's going to the hospital. You take care of yourself and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Ta-da! So what's up? I've hurt my leg, <laughs> my knee. I have, I've got to read it because I can't say it. Meniscal tear. Miniscule what? A miniscule. Well, we know you're not miniscule. Meniscule. M-E-N-I-S-C-A-L. So what does it mean? Basically, I've got to do everything for the next three months. Correct. It basically means I've torn the cartilage in my knee. But is your scrotum all right? <laughs> He says, I've got to have my legs up for 72 hours, which is usually Colin. 